We try and have a very creative curriculum here, very flexible, um, and so we, we actually plan to build the India project into the whole school curriculum. Community cohesion is, is, is very high on the um, educational agenda at the moment and, um, and also the provision for gifted and talented. Uh, so we've tried to marry the two together. The use of all those resources that we've gathered from visits there, from the resources that the teachers from India have brought over here have really been exciting for those children. And it's certainly given them an additional challenge. Um, they're now linking with the schools in Bangalore on a regular basis and using media as, as, as the key way to communicate and share experiences. I was fortunate enough to get to go to India. I think the images that I brought back with me, some of those actually challenged what a community is and how, how we work in a community. And I think that then brought out the discussion. Did you have a question in your mind that you were going to look at through, through videoing your class um, as you were discussing it? Yeah, I think a little bit was to think about what, what that word community cohesion meant for, for us. And I think having my, the children filming each other, um, filming me and all of the discussions that we had, that sort of built the framework for answering that question really. And it wasn't until we put everything together and watched it as one whole piece that we even had a semblance of an answer. This year I got to go on the best school trip ever. Two weeks in India and no children to look after. It was an amazing experience and the places I went and people I met will stay with me forever. India is truly a country of contrasts. Out of the window of our car I saw evidence of extreme wealth and extreme poverty living side by side. The definition of community cohesion refers to the togetherness and bonding of people within a community the glue that holds them together. I was really interested in the children's thoughts on this and where they felt they fitted in. We easily identified some of the communities we were a part of and how this is a big part of our identity. Who do we think we are? I'm Rachel. I'm part of Brough Primary School Year 6, Mr Orland, and I play for the Brough Primary School netball team, uh, South Cave Juniors football team and South Cave Gymnastics Club. I'm Oliver and I'm part of um, Bluff Primary School, Mr. Drew Brown's class. Um, I'm part of Bluff School Indian Project and um, do lots of sports activities. I'm Yvonne and I, go, and I go to Bluff Primary School. I also go to Chinese School in Hull and I go to Eagle Club every two weeks on Thursday. I wanted to develop that knowledge into an understanding of the meaning of community and also what happens when a community doesn't work. One of the many things I brought back from my experience to share with my children was a selection of images, one image in particular of a glass topped wall surrounding an affluent villa complex really brought the idea of this home to the children. It looks so cruel, why are people doing, why are people getting separated, it's quite mean, it looks dangerous. We combine that image of the glass on the wall with some from the media. There's in the picture with the fire, people don't look very happy. Who's fighting who? Who started it? Why are the people angry? Who are the police trying to stop them getting to? Where is it happening? It looks like in England. I never heard of anything like that. On your screens and on the laptop over there, some pictures and some video. Have a little look and see what you think's going on and why I might have chosen to show you those thinking about the discussions we've already had. Why have you written that word? What's different about this picture? What's, what's the different feeling? I think it might be like a wedding. Yeah, and, it's like, and the word love, and what's another word? What does a wedding do? A wedding brings a couple together. Perfect, so that's an exact opposite of what we've looked at, isn't it? Yeah. Why do you think they brought us into this picture? Myself and Miss Lloyd. Um, maybe because... Um, they might have wanted like a special day because 
They didn't normally see like um, white people yeah. every single day. Yeah, because it was quite unusual to see um, a, a, a white person. Mm. But actually, if you look at their faces, they're having such a lovely day, aren't they? And they wanted to invite us to their wedding because they wanted us to be part of the day. Can you remember what we said when we looked at that picture with the wall and the glass? What did we say that was separating? The rich and the poor. Now this is a bit different, this video, because you might notice something about how the people are working and how they're living together. So can you see the, very, the difference between those buildings? Look. That's the house of the staff. Yeah, so they've got all these really nice houses at the start of the street and then they've got... Slum walls. When we're talking about that word community, whereas we have communities where we're all similar yeah. and we've yeah. looked at communities that are living totally separately and now we've got different people yeah. living together. together. Yeah. So it's, it's still yeah. not properly community because they're not, I, I don't think they're treated equally as they are with them. Right. Okay, so you think that if someone's treated differently in a community that makes them not part of that community? Well, not particularly, really, because it might mean that they can't. That people are saying you can't do this, and that means they're not part of it if they're treated differently. Now, can you think of one of the other conversations that we've had where that's happened, where somebody looks like they're living as a part of a community, but something happened that prevented them from being an active part? Um, Come on, it's your favourite place. Bradford. Yeah. What was what was one of the problems that happened? They wouldn't, oh, they, they wouldn't they, let. Um, just hang on a minute, Megan, because you've made all the points now, and he's not normally this quiet. Mm -hmm. What was what was the what was one of the really big problems that they they had? They weren't letting them join into the community, As um, much. excluding them. Yes, yeah. it was. They wanted to have more of their own people in the council and right. things like that, weren't they? Yeah, they weren't allowing them to. No, they weren't, and also some of the some of the the white Bradford people were thinking, you know, why should you? Yes, weren't we they? were there first. Yeah. As a result of these images, video and discussions, the children have truly been on a journey with me. We have not just studied the area, but also touched upon subjects which impact much closer to home. Your school has a lot of remit beyond basic education mm -hmm. to provide to the community. Where do you think a project like this sits in delivering these yeah. other remit. It's really important and I think not just for the children but for their parents and grandparents and if children can take home these really vital messages to their parents then hopefully that's going to have an even bigger impact on our community and a community like ours in the East Riding where they've got limited experience of different cultures then I think it's absolutely vital. Rachel is it able to deliver the remit beyond basic curriculum? I think so, definitely. I think that's, a, as Mrs Pearson said, I think that's absolutely, that's hugely important that um, it's a part of the community and our community here is perhaps slightly, it is different to the communities that we experienced in India, but I think the understanding and the knowledge and the experiences that we've had in India ourselves, I think if we can share that with this community, I think that's a hugely a beneficial thing. You've talked about the glue that keeps communities together. Yes. Through all this, did you discover what that glue was? <laughs> Hard work, I think. Um, the children sort of talked about um, you have to be, to be a part of a community, you have to put things into it. And it takes the work of everybody putting their, their bit in and also sort of including other people. And I think that's the challenge and that was maybe where the problems lay in a lot of the images that we that we sort of looked at really and particularly some of the film footage it's possible for people to live together and not be a community now we've got different people living together so it's still yeah. not properly community because they're not i don't think they're treated equally as they are with them right and each other. okay so you think that if someone's treated differently in a community that makes them not part of that community well not particularly really because it might mean that they can't, that people are saying you can't do this and that means they're not part of it if they're treated differently. Yeah, that's excellent. The local authority and everybody else must ask a lot of you as a head teacher. There are lots of initiatives. How are you able to deliver that? 
I think we have to put our school first and we have to look what are we capable and what are we ready to take on next. And then you find some enthusiastic members of staff because there's not one person can deliver all this so it's shared leadership such as Joanna and Rachel in this project. Without them this project would not have got off the ground. Now it's working very well but it's still only a very very small area of our school that are benefiting from that at the moment. The next big challenge is that we have to then take that and spread that throughout the whole school. It's a lot of burden on your shoulders, <laughs> isn't it? How are you taking it on? I think working with the gifted and talented group has really helped because it's focused us in on a few children and they're sensible and mature enough that you can learn along with them, then I think they will take it to the rest of the children and that's why we specifically chose two children from each year group, a boy and a girl, and particularly with the video yeah. it works perfectly because the children have had a hand in making the video and then they feel like they've got some ownership of delivering that as well. What do you think about like, what we've been doing with St Anne's in the Indian project? I think it helps us understand other people and everyone has a strength and a weakness. And that's kind of like being a community as well. Because yes, joining people together. Yeah. You've done very well in keeping it objective and that you're reflecting and not reacting to a situation. We did the reactions right there and then and um, I know that we wrote things down and yeah. we spoke to each other and we had a cry when something <laughs> was hard and then it was really interesting for me to see the similar reaction that I got from the children as I felt the first time I saw that um, image or that sort of road scene and whatever so I think it was fairly easy for me to remove myself from that. One thing I picked up watching the children's expressions was that they're very used to seeing images in, in media of India and all over the world. But because there were two teachers there who they knew and they could relate to, then it had such a huge impact on the children. This year I got to go on the best school trip ever. Two weeks in India and no children to look after. It was an amazing experience and the places I went and people I met will stay with me forever. But why did you decide to get rid of the original sound that was on the other clip? I wanted to sort of pull in something that I was talking about, so that was the, the footage of the road coming past. Um, and I was just a bit conscious that I didn't want the sound of the film clip to take away from what I was saying. We really want to hear a little bit of that sound. OK. So I think what I'd, what I'd like you to do is if we can just we can just raise a little bit of that original sound, yeah? Okay. It was an amazing experience, and the places I went and people I met will stay with me forever. Oh, yeah. So In Jewish, it, truly. It's nice, because it, we can still hear you clearly. Yeah. Having the Atmos is, is really useful, because it, it makes what you're seeing much more alive, and it really gives you a sense of place with mm -hmm. what you're actually seeing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great.